All right, so I'm not really sure how to describe this game other than I guess this is what would happen if uh, Fortnite and Overwatch had a strange night of passion in China and Hanzo got the baby, I guess? I don't know. Let's talk about this. The gameplay featured here is fueled by Player One Coffee, coffee made by gamers for gamers. Use the link in the description to get 5% off any of your purchases. Okay, I uh, really don't know um, the right way to go about this game. I know you guys are probably tired of me covering Battle Royale games, and honestly, I'm kind of tired of covering them. The problem with that is uh, I cover a lot of new games, and almost every new game that's coming out is some sort of Battle Royale game. Now, I saw this one, it was recommended to me on the Steam Marketplace, which is my own fault because I constantly try to download the newest stuff possible that I can get my hands on, and sometimes that means getting recommended some pretty crappy things or some just off-the-wall strange things, but, you know, like I said, that's my own fault, and this popped up on my recommended feed, and I read the reviews and read the description and decided I had to at least see what it was, so... Yeah. Alright, so this game is Horizon Source. This game is listed as a Battle Royale hero shooter game. And it only has squad modes available right now. The only actual game mode available is competitive squad. Um, the other areas are grayed out. Now, it's listed as having North American and Asian servers. And both uh, Chinese and English language. Now, I installed it, and it had mixed reviews. A lot of people saying they were having a blast playing it, even though the queue times were long because not a lot of people were playing it. And then some people just saying this game's absolute garbage. Now, when I see a lot of mixed reviews, especially when a lot of the negative comments have like five minutes or an hour worth of gameplay in, I choose to try to normally disregard that so I can form my own opinion about it when I play it. So I downloaded it, and while it is mostly in English, if you choose the English language, most of it is still in Chinese. And while it says it's a North American server, um, I've yet to get my ping below 100 milliseconds, and everybody that I've played with normally is Chinese. I've played, I think, with two English-speaking people. And so I wouldn't really say that this has North American servers. I really don't see it possible, because my ping's very it's very close to what my ping is whenever I play Ring of Elysium. And I am playing on Thailand servers when I play that. So I have a hard time believing that this is actually North American servers, just because of the way it plays and how many Chinese people are actually in the, the supposed North American servers. Now to start things off, this game is like a culmination of several different games roughly thrown together. Now, at the moment, I believe there's only five different heroes you can choose from. Now, you can choose different skins, just like Overwatch. The UI looks a lot like Overwatch when it comes to buying skins. Um, when you kill players, they drop loot boxes, look a lot like the Overwatch loot boxes. Um, and it's a lot like Fortnite, as it, you can collect building materials and build ramps and walls and build little forts and stuff. Now, I haven't really done that too much. I haven't really seen anybody else doing it too much, so... I don't really think that's going to be a big part of the game if it does stick around, which I'm having a really hard time believing, because this game is pretty rough around the edges. Now, the heroes in the game, they have their own special abilities. They It's a lot like Overwatch, except I really only think there's one special ability that you really have besides your weapon. And it's, it's a lot like Overwatch and Paladins. You know, you have your tank, you have your support, you have damage, you have a flank. And there's really the only five. The only customization options you have are choosing different skins for these characters. So every team you run into is going to be a culmination of the, the five of these different heroes. And a lot of times people just always choose damage because there's not a lot of team play in this game, especially seeing how it's divided between American players and Chinese players. You can choose to stick by people, and but nobody really works together very well in this game, at least not right now. Now, like I said, this game is really rough around the edges, but it is slightly enjoyable. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad game. I know a lot of people are on the fence, especially when Chinese developers come out with these games, because it's obviously just a chance to, you know, capitalize on some kind of craze, and because both hero shooters and Battle Royale are still kind of very popular, it's it was obvious that somebody was going to be doing this. I mean, we've already seen Paladins come out with Realm Royale and uh, start working on that. So it wasn't really that shocking to see this happen, but after playing Ring of Elysium and liking it a lot and seeing how polished it was compared to PUBG, um, especially for the state of development it's in, I decided, well, you know what, I'll go ahead and give this game a shot. And it, it, it is clearly a blatant ripoff of all those different games thrown together. Um, I really don't think I'm going to play it a whole bunch, but it is sometimes enjoyable. So I think it might be a game I keep on here temporarily, at least for a while, 
and play from time to time whenever I'm wanting to play something a little different. Now the combat in this game is very clunky. Now a lot of that has to do with the ping being so high because even though it says it's North American servers, my ping's extremely high. It's like it holds around 120 uh, milliseconds. Yeah. Combat's really clunky. It's kind of stiff. It's not too bad, but it's also not really that enjoyable, especially because you've only got the one type of weapon. Depending on who, you, what hero you choose, that is your weapon, and you even have to find a regular. You have to find a weapon in order to be able to even use a weapon, but. There are different grades of weapons, similar to Fortnite, how there's, you know, common, uncommon, rare, legendary, that kind of stuff. And you have to actually find that weapon, and even though it looks like a gun when you pick it up, it's just whatever weapon your character normally has. Like, I like to play with a character that's got the crossbow, so I pick up a weapon, I've automatically got my crossbow, and it does so much amount of damage. There is armor, I found it a couple times, I've not really seen it do too much, or be very effective, really. As I've seen a lot of people just go on and win without any armor whatsoever. I went so long without any armor. It didn't really seem to affect anything when I did get armor. Didn't reduce my damage really that much at all. If it did, maybe, you know, 10%, but that's really about it. Now, the game is kind of enjoyable, especially if you can find people that, you know, speak the same language as you and can actually, you know, work together. If you can't speak the same language or you can't understand them, the best thing you can do is just try to stay close and play your role like whatever hero you choose play that role the same way you would a hero shooter now if you've never played a game like overwatch or paladins and you came into this game and you're just like a battle royale fan it might take you a little bit to get used to it because the roles are very specific um, i mean you've got the ninja type character which is really good at flank and you've got to be really accurate with your shots but you're really hard to hit because you can do the double jump and you've got special abilities that allow you to actually, you know, get get up close and do some serious amount of damage. Um, if you're one of the crossbow range users, you want to try to keep your range and pick people off from a distance, like a sniper would. Um, you got your damage with the automatic rifle. You just want to try to spray and pray as much as possible. Your support. You want to try to keep everybody healed on your team when they need healed. And like I said, this game's not necessarily a bad game, but it's not really a good game. It's really, it just depends on you. If you play it and you enjoy it, awesome. If you play it and you don't like it, don't feel like you're just hating on a game to hate on it. It really does take, you know, a little bit of getting used to to play it. And it's really not that fun, especially seeing how the wait times to get in a match are pretty long. Uh, I think I usually wait about four minutes or so, four to five minutes before I even get into a match. So don't think that if you just don't like this game, you're being weird. It's actually very common. This game's only okay to some people now i wouldn't say it's as bad as radical heights i still think that radical heights was a garbage move on uh bosky studios and cliff blazinski to try to capitalize and make money off something that's not even remotely fixed now this game doesn't even have an item shop you can't buy anything um you can see the mall button up at the top of the menu but you can't click it there is no you can't pay for anything in this game so it's not somebody trying to cash it on money right now so I definitely still think this game is going in a better direction than Radical Heights is. Do I think it's going to survive for very long? More than likely not. But I mean, if Last Man Standing is still around, I, maybe we can expect more updates on this game. And maybe it will turn out to be really good in the future. But it definitely was a game I wasn't expecting to see in the marketplace. It kind of came up out of nowhere. And if, if it keeps developing and keeps, you know, work, maybe adding different heroes and fixing the Chinese language when it's supposed to be English, maybe actually giving us a North American server, then I'll probably play it from time to time and enjoy it. I've already uninstalled Radical Heights. There are only certain games I keep installed in my system for so long because I really don't feel like, you know, hoarding up hard drive space for games I'm never going to play again because I just do not like them. So I'm going to keep this one on my hard drive. I'll play it from time to time and see what kind of updates unfold. But yeah, so far it's just kind of a mixed bag for me. But that's all the time I got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I kind of piqued your interest on a game that you might not have known about. Um, if you are interested in it, it is in the Steam Marketplace. Link will be in the description. Um, if you guys can, we do have a Patreon set up to help support this channel while we're waiting on YouTube to fix everything that they've already broken. Um, so yeah, if you guys can check out that Patreon, that would be awesome. Um, if not, we still love you guys. Thank you. If you like this video and you want to see more, please click that subscribe button. If you want to make sure you get video notifications, make sure you click that bell icon. YouTube's been really strange about getting subs notifications whenever anybody's posted. So if you want to make sure you get notified whenever we make a video, just please click that bell icon. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys next time.